Hey guys, welcome back to yet another Python video. And in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about comments and style. So throughout the video so far, for the most part, we've been executing individual statements. And while that's not necessarily going to change in this particular video, I think we need to have a little bit more sense as far as how to properly format things and also how to document our code as well. Let's go ahead and dive in. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is open up my text editor. You just go ahead and open up whichever text editor you prefer. Again, I'm using Nano. So I'll call mine script.py. I'm just not feeling very creative today at all. And here I am in a blank editor window and I'm just gonna go ahead and set up my script just like I normally would. And what we want to do first is just take a look at the concept of comments. Now, I've mentioned in a previous video that even though comments normally start with a hash, the hash bang, as this first line is called, isn't counted in that, but any other line that we use a hash symbol for will be ignored. So here's a pretty easy example. So I'm going to go ahead and just write this. So this is a comment. And then I'm going to execute a print statement. Print. This is not a comment. And go ahead and save the file and then exit out. So what I can do now, I'm going to go ahead and make that executable actually and execute it. And the only thing that actually gets executed is that one print statement. Now, if you recall, this is our actual code right here. We have our hash bang, we have a comment, and then we have a print statement. Now, we see that this is the statement that got executed. This one was ignored. And this one just basically sets up our environment and isn't really anything we need to be concerned about. So. It's probably pretty simple. You probably already guessed that was going to happen, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys know how to set up a comment. And go back into the file. And I'm gonna give you guys a bonus tip. Now this has nothing to do with Python, but it is something that can help us here. In the previous video, I showed you how to open up an editor and save a file. And then I also showed you how to use a graphical text editor named Genie, so you basically just use whatever editor you want. But if you're using a command line utility, Nano or Vim, like I am in my videos, you might be wondering if there's a way to execute the code without exiting the text editor. Just now, I exited the editor, I executed the code, and then I opened up the file again. There actually is a way to do that, so let's take a look. So here I am in the actual text file, the script that we were using. And to minimize this, so to speak, or to send it to the background, I can just simply hold Control and press Z. This is a Linux thing, not a Python thing, but it helps us out here. Now, the text editor is gone and we are back at the shell. So if I wanted to, I can execute that script. I could just do dot forward slash script, whatever, whatever the file name is, press Enter, execute it. And to get it back, or to maximize it or bring it to the foreground, I do FG for foreground, and press enter, and I'm back in the text editor. So again, control Z sends it to the background, FG brings it to the foreground. Just a quick tip that I thought might be useful, not necessarily related to the content in this video, but I thought I might mention it just in case it might be helpful. Now, what I'm actually going to do is get rid of these, li these lines right here, and we're just basically going to, uh, we're gonna start fresh. So what I'm gonna do now is set up a variable. I'm gonna call it my var, I'm gonna set it equal to three, and I'm going to make it print the contents of my var. So I'm going to save the file and minimize it. And of course, it's just going to print three. We pretty much expected that was going to happen. But what I want to show you is that we can actually do comments in line by actually putting the hash symbol right after a line of code. So we want to do two spaces this is getting into the style aspect of the video. There actually is a generally agreed upon number of spaces 
and various things for formatting Python code correctly. I'll get into that in a minute. But what I can actually do is put this is a comment right here on the same line as actual Python code. If I save it and run it, the output is not different. So basically an inline com comment, as you can see here, is just a comment on the same line as code. That's pretty easy. So starting fresh, I'll just go ahead and remove the lines. Control K gets rid of the lines and we'll set up a, a, another example. So there's also something called a multi-line comment, which honestly, when you see this, you're probably gonna be underwhelmed and wonder why it's even considered a separate thing because all it is, is this. It's just a series of comments, but it's its own classification in the Python documentation, so I should probably cover it. And all it is is just several lines in a row that are individual comments. So that could be useful if you have to write several sentences, for example, something that you can't fit into one line because Python does have a recommended character amount per line. Specifically, the Python documentation recommends that lines be no longer than 79 characters long. So if you have to write a really long comment, it might be more appropriate to use a multi-line comment. So then of course you just simply have your regular text. And I'll save the file. And as you expected, it just prints that one line. No surprise there. But there's also a type of comment called a documentation string or more commonly referred to as a doc string. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out all the lines here and effectively start over. So what is a doc string? Well, I just mentioned that it's a type of comment and it's specifically for documentation. So the way it's written is you start with three quotes and then you could type some comments. So I went ahead and basically typed out a doc string. Now you'll notice that the nano text editor is smart enough to know that's a doc string. It's colored green. If I hit backspace, it turns white. If I put that last quotation mark there, it completes the requirements for that to be a doc string and then shows it in green. And we can see that we start off with three quotes. We end with three quotes as well. And that's effectively how a doc string is. Now, doc strings are generally for documentation. So when you're starting out a program, you might say something like I'm saying right here, you know, this program is intended and then you write what it's intended to do or the purpose of the program, whatever, however you wanna word that. You could put the version number here. You could also put your author information in there, maybe your contact information, the website for your code or GitHub. URL, anything like that, you can include here in the doc string. And I just put some random information here just to show you the purpose of that. And then of course, you have your Python code going down. I'm not going to execute this because again, you're just going to see whatever uh, Python print command I was most likely thinking of doing, you'll just see that being executed and basically all of this being skipped documentation and comments are usually specifically for the person looking at the code. It's generally not something that ever gets executed. It's just for uh, keeping track of what things are doing and making sure you have some useful notes in there. Now what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna erase all of this and I'm gonna write a new program and I will be right back. All right, so I just wrote this really lame program, but it does serve a point I want to mention in regards to commenting out code, which is another use case for comments. Now this program will fail. I even wrote up here, this program will fail. So if I was to save this file and then execute it, we can see that I have a syntax error. We expected that, I did that on purpose. I knew that syntax error was there. And basically we don't, we can't have a space right here because the file name is not supposed to have a space. So basically, here's what we're doing. We're basically printing something. We're creating a variable called myVar1, setting it to three. myVar2, we're creating that variable, setting it to two. But then we're going to redeclare myVar1, but we're gonna set it to five this time. This doesn't exist because we never created it because we accidentally, or in my case, purposely, but we'll pretend accidentally put in a space there. And it's pretty obvious why this program doesn't work. I mean, if I just remove that space and try to execute it again, 
it works just fine. But the point of the matter is, sometimes you don't always know what the problem is. You might be looking through your code and you're like, you know, I get these errors, I really don't know where it is. It's, it could be a program that's a thousand lines, it's just really hard. I mean, yeah, it does give you line numbers, usually when it shows a failure, but sometimes the failure could actually be on a different line than the line that it's indicating. But a long story made short, sometimes it makes sense to comment out a line of code. So if you didn't already know that this was an error, you could say, you know, this looks really weird to me. I don't know why uh, there's a space there. Maybe that's why it's failing. I'll try commenting out that line of code, and then I will rerun the program, and I'm going to see if that makes any difference. And of course it does, because we basically transformed that line of code into a comment. And that's something you'll often hear in the programming community when they say, comment out a line of code or a piece of code or a section of code. They're basically just referring to adding a comment mark to make the interpreter, the Python interpreter, skip that line of code. So that way they can test how their program will respond when they omit a certain line of code from the interpreter. And that's just part of debugging. It's not the most efficient way of debugging, but you know, in a pinch, when you want to test something quickly, it is effective. So that's basically all there is to the portion of this video where I talk about comments, but I do want to talk a little bit more about style. So what I'm going to do is open up a web page, and the website that I have up here on my screen right now is an index of the Python Enhancement Proposals, or PEPs. And you're going to see PEP referenced quite a bit in Python because the Python Enhancement Proposals are recommendations on how to write Pythonic code. Pythonic basically means Python-like, or in other words, proper organization of code in terms of spacing, naming variables, and so on. You don't have to have a good understanding of this now. In fact, you don't even have to follow this at all. But I mention this because if you were ever curious on the proper way of writing a particular statement in Python, you now have a site you can bookmark that will provide you with that information that you can simply look at anytime you want to get more information about a specific aspect. So here I just went to this URL right here. And this is just a good example of something relative to the content of this video where we talked about comments. This is a section of the PEPs that is referring to proper formatting of comments. So for example, you should use two spaces after a sentence ending period in multi-line or multi-sentence comments except for the final sentence. And then in inline comments it mentions use them sparingly. And then it gives you some information and some examples and so on. So I just wanted to bring up the Python enhancement proposals because it's just one of those things like I mentioned you should bookmark and have at hand in case you need it. As you learn Python, you're going to probably bookmark a lot of sites. There's a lot of useful sites out there. Um, there's Python Module of the Week, for example, among others, where you can gain um, some more detailed knowledge. And part of what, set, what, makes a, uh, what makes a big difference when you're learning a programming language is not just following the content that the person is teaching you, but to also look up the documentation for what they're teaching you and also expand on that. I mean, it's one thing to learn how to write a variable, but it's another to also read some documentation on that. And in this case, we learned about comments, which is a very simple topic, but you can learn more about the proper formatting of comments by looking at the uh, PEPS page for it, for example. And then when we learn more advanced concepts like functions and things like that, after I teach those concepts to you, you'll also be able to get some documentation on those. I showed you the Python help function earlier, and there's also the official Python documentation. There's just a lot of different sources out there. Anyway, that was basically it. I just wanted to make sure you guys knew how to write comments, and I just wanted to mention some information on style. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, go ahead and check out my sponsor and my cloud server provider, Linode. Linode now features a new and improved dashboard, their cloud manager, that makes it an absolute breeze to set up your own Linux server. They even have Arch Linux, how cool is that? And of course they have all the staples such as CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, and more. 
and it's very easy to set up a server near you. In fact, Linode currently has nine worldwide data centers with two more set to appear this year in India and Canada. So definitely check them out guys. I appreciate them as a sponsor. I appreciate you guys as a viewer. So thanks again for watching. Subscribe to my channel. I will have more content coming for you very soon. Stay tuned.